Super dark. Endless bummer. Slash slipped through the cracks. Now, Svelinia muttered the word without attention at the night. But feeling the pure presence of something about to hit or something about to burrow popping up through ground that crumbled like garbage to sponge compost, crumbling like rotten dirt cake. Something from it, from out there, coming to nuzzle animal and alien, like the sloth draped like a backpack asleep on her back, but wild. Somehow, she was standing there for a reason, even if through the time melt magic of her nighty night watch. It was some evasive reason now, lost to the humanless vacuum just outside day night's long, long moments of and in between herself. The scarf pressed to her face, overlapping itself several times in semi suffocating, face hugging comfort. Wispy, flickering shades of past lives muffled, slash discontinued. Cut off, the echo of her companion's observation on their very first moments out here in the inescapable greenscape. Then, at the time, still trying to cheeseball a motto for morale and camaraderie, but Smiling into the darkness, a tiny spark of memory illuminated the vast dead space of her own recollections for a moment, and she revived the impression that something very important had all come crashing down. But the story trailed off, fading and dissipating into black fuzz with the rest of the nonsense, flatly not there or always just teasing the consciousness like a freshly forgotten dream. It was missing somehow. For such recent memories, her brain held no recorded history. The simple letter B and the number four. They had combined to mark a before versus this after. An otherwise bad acronym was now a flag, a marker, a blunt, timestamp for the half-life of n that waning alternate universe before versus now all caps and now there was this this dark their night this crisp jungle all its tactics and garbage but the lack of decay the interruption of nature's automation any and all inadvertent roles played. Lack of normal bugs, microbes, all the micro critters, which should have normally been going about their business. But now, everything was either over alive or the perceived cruelty of all that salting and crystallizing and quiet. But no matter. The stillness of immeasurable biomass, calmly breathing slowly for the moment, also unleashed on a different scale, instilled a heart-stopping hush in her heart. This was a regular stillness. If and when, broken by so much as weathered a weathered plastic twig, now sounds even the tiniest. Crackle, crackle here through this, like particle physics or wave lightning or what have you amid plants that weren't their plants and the arguable myriad monsters they most certainly helped congeal. But no bother. She told herself, blinking a very slow blink and breathing, breathing in the smell of her own recycled breath and onward. And here was their life now, she self-reaffirmed. Obscene flora and the fauna they quashed into time waste and the whatever they were left with. Some something and something had to happen. 
other than promises of progress, leftover ideas better than others' theories. Just shreds of what the heck is this? The life sentence of a lifetime of unfinished sentences, nothing like the time brought to you by that old letter B and the number four. Before, 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 yep. But long since having shrugged off the struggle to remember anything about how everything was or had been or should be, a brief, un unaccounted for history as foxy and complex, twisted and dense as the mounds of loosely woven cloth, like the coverings heaped in wraps from her nose to her neck, fuzzy yarns bristling like stories, but held together with the fur of microscopic anchors, a bit like claws, all tightly packed so that the material caught and stayed on, stayed put on itself and even clung to the skin. One image to match the feeling harbored back to Velcro blanketed science theories featuring DNA models, the mechanics of which were automatically and forever building complex woven chains as they reproduced, re-reproduced into the future. With her furry bundled up thoughts centered on this picture and how it spun off into the further unravelings of a make-do worldview which held together for this temporary forever. All the lengths taken and ensconced in platypus down with care for a moment, Svealinia pried a gap between her face and the scarf to take a deep drag of the illicit night air before snuggling back into the wrap, lighter, fluffier, and more densely than before. Like the platypus down walls, soft and indestructible, a feeling that could linger for hours as long as she could maintain the still, meditative force field, which was unlikely. The arguments she and Vikingur had put forth still echoed in her otherwise neutral mind space, his voice and hers pinging around on a frequency known to have no real resolution. Now came a break, a brief and barely noted, and her mind took leave of unsolvable problems, which usually sounded like, we did not sign up for this. We are not nocturnal animals, non-nocturnal animals sharing one dim waning flashlight. Can't be expected to strain our tiny eyeballs and observe suspect activities they be they real or dreamt or seen but not there, all that projection of attention into the night, all night, every night, vision, all for naught. But visions came nevertheless, inner stuff, only mind stuff, rushing to fill in the blanks. The outside was too dark the dark part, if you will, her ability to practically hear in the nothing paired well with Vic's knack of being pretty much able to see in the dark, which made for a compromise when they were su supposed to have their proverbial feelers cast out over the clearing, the clearing synonymous with the cruel indifference of nature and certain strange emptiness, a void that should have been filled with life in a normal forest, but this was not that. An emptiness surrounded by a vast wilderness, a great and terrible unknown unknown. She nuzzled her own face back and forth against the thick scarves for self-comfort, then darted a glance over to the periphery where Vic was still steeped in dealing and seeing that she was not being watched. Svealinia pulled open a gap of space from her face coverings and took a sweet breath of real air from the endless bummer's night air. We, she ruminated, 
letting the extremely high oxygen content and multicolored pollen tickle her brain with relief. We, who are, are just kids, absentmindedly cranking the crank of the crank-powered emergency roadside assistance camping light, mostly just to hear the whir. She glanced down to look at the device in her hand, which was very much like a spare tire, only really supposed to be employed in case of emergency and used temporarily. But here they were, a long spell later, still using the backup as a go-to. The orangeness of the dim notification LED were to brightness, a sign that the battery was charging light for now or later. She glanced back to check in on the scene lit by the only other light in the room, a camping lantern whose light struggled to, de struggled to define the interior of a small studio tree house with one table, one chair, and piles of blanket-shaped fluff, mounds squirreled off to the sides for teasing, weaving, or napping. It was hardly comparable to anything anyone had in a quote-unquote house where quote-unquote rooms were to be found. Letting go of these artsy observations, her ears let the whir of the crank slow to a stop and tuned in to what her partner was doing, shuffling cards. The light click, click, click of plastic-coated cardstock being dealt after a good shuffle was comforting human activity. Vic's formal northern pragmatism often winced at Svealina's offhand reveries, which she rarely hesitated to whip out during the long, quiet hours of their night watch. She, in turn, refused to call their duty night watch because that was because that sort of branding was simply too cool. Bored blur would have been more accurate, even if it sounded bad. Venturing inwardly through the dense tangle of thoughts, snagged and held fast by the stillness of their world, her mind tugged, trying to wander off-leash again to circumvent the tedium.